Have you ever wondered what's more important for your spine? Resistance training, impact training, or simulated impact training like osteogenic loading through biodensity or osteostrong? Well, these are hard questions to answer without great research. But the good news is there is a study that can actually help us. So this video is for you if you are interested in conserving and building spine bone density and quality. Before I get started, if you're using biodensity or osteostrong and have a story to tell, either good or bad, why don't you leave it in the comments on YouTube so we can share it with our community. One last thing before we get into the content. I've noticed recently that only 40% of the people that watch this channel are subscribed. So if you get value out of this content, if you could please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel so that we can help more people with the same content that you find valuable. You see, the more people that subscribe and the more interaction that the channel gets, the more the YouTube algorithm will put this in front of other people who are looking for the same type of material. So please help me serve our mission to help others and subscribe to this channel. So I'm actually gonna do this in two parts. So this first part is gonna be on a specific study that looks at spine and all these things I'm about to talk about. Part two will come shortly after, and it's gonna look more at the hip and some other ways to look at bone quality and some other imaging modalities. But this is part one specifically on spine. So let's talk about the players that matter in this conversation, because this does get really, really confusing with all of these different commercial interests and all these different names. So let me just first talk about osteogenic loading. So osteogenic loading is a term that was defined by Dr. John Jaquish. He is one of the inventors or the inventor of the equipment behind biodensity and osteostrong. Osteogenic loading is just simply the idea that we need to load our bones with enough force to stimulate the bones to actually want to make new bone. We're stimulating change. This is Wolf's Law. This goes back to Orthopedics 101. If we stress bones, bones will respond to that stress. Osteogenic loading, though, is pretty clear in that resistance training alone is usually not enough. And this gets really confusing, especially as we start talking about these other names, like Liftmore, for example. We're going to talk about one of the Liftmore trials today. Liftmore is an acronym that was used in multiple studies, and it stands for Lifting Intervention for Training Muscle and Osteoporosis rehabilitation. That's Liftmore. This is specifically the Liftmore men's trial, so it's Liftmore M. Liftmore is a name that's commonly used to describe the intervention that was used in the study, or HIRIT, H-I-R-I-T. That's High Intensity Resistance and Impact training. Now, this is a uh, series of three exercises. I'll go through the details, but three exercises for resistance training and one of impact training that was done for a period of eight months, twice a week. And then out of these studies, these Liftmore trials, came the commercial product Onero. Onero is a product that can be licensed to teach the, the specific exercises that were used in the Liftmore trial. So Onero is opening up around the globe based out of Australia. So why all the hubbub around these things? Well, there's a lot of conversation around bone health, osteoporosis, and doing exercise. And if you go to your doctor and you have a diagnosis of osteoporosis, it's very likely that they will say, take this drug, you should probably take calcium and vitamin D, and you should probably do some weight-bearing exercise. You might have heard me say in the past, I really dislike the term weight-bearing exercise because weight-bearing exercise like walking is not enough. In fact, you could argue weight-bearing exercise is anytime you get up out of your chair and you put load on your feet. That is not going to help us to reverse or prevent osteoporosis. Then there's a school of thought that says resistance training is all you need to do because if you lift weights, you will improve your bones. That's not really true either. I have studied this in depth. I've done multiple videos on this topic. Resistance training alone may slow down bone loss, but I've seen very few studies that show that it will actually build bone unless it is paired with impact. And this is where this gets a little bit confusing. So impact training is not talked about as much, nor is it done as often because it is potentially riskier, right? When I talked about the Liftmore trial, I mentioned the HIRIT intervention, which is high intensity resistance and impact training. So again, we'll talk about the details of that, but that study uses impact in studies that only use resistance training, even if it's high intensity, can slow down bone loss, but generally do not build bone. But the question most people are asking is, what do I need to do, right? Do I need to do impact training and biodensity and high intensity resistance training? Do I need to go to the gym? Do I need to be able to do these specific exercises? And the answer is, it depends on the person. 
But understanding the power of each to the best of our ability with the research that's available is a really good starting point to be able to make that decision. So let's talk about this trial. So again, lift more trial, lifting intervention for training muscle and osteoporosis rehabilitation, specifically for men. So this is a semi-randomized controlled trial. It included 93 men, average age of 67. They had to be over the age of 45 and they had to have low bone density. So then they were split into three groups. So the HIRIT group, the biodensity group, which is this machine using osteogenic loading, and a control group where there was no intervention other than the normal lifestyle stuff. The study went on for eight months. The high rate group and the biodensity group used twice weekly supervised sessions, and there was high compliance, meaning both groups did most of the things. In fact, it was about the same within one percentage of each other. So let's talk a little bit more about this high rate protocol. So this is an exercise protocol using three resistance training exercises. One is the deadlift, very well-known exercise, although not easy to do exercise. The second one is the back squat. So barbell on your shoulders doing a back squat. The third one is an overhead barbell press. These are great exercises. They are full body complex exercises, but they are not necessarily easy to do and the form is not easy to learn. That's why there is a, Oniro is a program that teaches this to professionals so that they can teach it. The fourth part of this is the jumping chin-ups as it's described in the study. And essentially what this is, is jumping up, grabbing the bar and pushing or pulling yourself up as high as you can and then dropping off and landing as hard as you can. That's the impact piece. Now, the challenge I have with that is that all four of those exercises are not something that are easy to learn on your own. Definitely not something that you can do without a significant home gym setup. And definitely, if done incorrectly, could lead to injury. So while I understand the principles around why it was developed that way, I do see it becoming very confusing for people. They feel like they have to do those exercises, and that's simply not true. Now, the biodensity piece or osteogenic loading piece, if you're not familiar with that, we've reported on it a little bit before. Um, essentially, these machines look like a piece of exercise equipment. What's different about these machines is that they, the two pieces don't move, or at least they don't move very much. And it, there are four specific exercises that you do, and biodensity is on one machine. If you're going to an OsteoStrong franchise location, there's four different machines. But either way, you're on a machine doing one of four exercises, and you do it with maximum exertion, meaning you're pushing as hard as you can or pulling as hard as you can. Now this becomes important later on, but you do that for about five seconds and you do it one time per workout. Now the manufacturers, BioDensity and OsteoStrong recommend that you do this once a week. In the study, they did it twice a week. And again, in the end, we'll talk about whether or not there's implications of that. One of the potential benefits here though, is that it's less dynamic. There's no actual impact. The machines are guiding you and you are putting all your own force through the machine. It's not pushing on you. So thought to be very safe. Okay, so let's look at the outcomes because we now have three groups. We're using DEXA, bone mineral density for outcomes. And this is after an eight month intervention. So the uh, primary outcome here was the lumbar spine. So if you go back to the first lift more trial, which was, was on postmenopausal women, they showed that there was a significant benefit of the high rate intervention compared to control specifically in the spine. In this study, you see the same thing. So the high rate group had a plus 4.1% increase or positive 4.1% increase in bone mineral density compared to uh, the, their beginning bone density measure. Now the biodensity group had a 2% increase in bone mineral density compared to their starting point, and the control group actually gained almost a percentage, which we'll talk again about that later. The high rate group showed benefit for all three areas, although not as much as for the spine, and then the biodensity group showed a little bit of benefit in the femoral neck, but not in the other two regions. Now they also did a section on an ultrasound of the calcaneus. I'm not gonna go through those results. I don't find that test to be particularly compelling. They also measured other muscle performance outcomes. And you saw again, Hyret slightly outperformed the osteogenic loading group. And again, we'll talk about some of the details of that. There were some functional tests as well, the five times sit to stand test. There's the peak impulse or jump power test. There's the timed up and go test. All these are different well-known 
functional tests and they saw improvement again in both groups. The high rate group usually outperformed the, the osteogenic loading group. And I already mentioned compliance was high in both groups and within one percentage of each other, there were a few minor adverse events in both groups as well, but there were no serious adverse events and there were no fractures. All right, so before I wrap all that together and come up with what I think we need to take away from this study, let me just say that if you're struggling to put together your own bone health journey and you haven't been to our masterclass, please come. The masterclass is an opportunity for me to tell you what the top five mistakes we see people make on their bone health journey are. We've watched thousands and thousands of people go through this process of improving their bones, going down this journey, learning all this information and putting it together on their own. Sometimes people make mistakes in this process because let's face it, it's really confusing. I would love to time collapse that for you, help you avoid these mistakes, and we also then leave about 20 minutes for Q&A at the end of that hour. So join us for the masterclass, link in the description on YouTube, or you can go to our website at osteocollective.com. All right, so what does this study mean? Like, what's the big picture here? Well, I would say some big picture things to keep in mind is that both of these interventions appear to be safe. Again, some minor adverse events, but no fractures. Compliance was high in both groups, meaning that in this population of men, almost 80% were able to do the majority of the of the the events the actual intervention over the course of the eight months now in this study the high rate intervention appears to be superior so here's some questions to consider so first of all this is the first time that biodensity or osteogenic loading has been compared to an intervention like high rate now, what's great about the study is that it's comparing what is the most well-known and probably arguably the, the biggest benefit intervention from an exercise perspective for bone that exists. So now we can compare these two things. One of the questions that we always have to ask is, is there any bias? So Dr. Beck is the founder of Nero, which came after this study for sure. But Oniro is a commercial product, again, licensing this same intervention now outward, and clearly that's a, a monetary gain. So does she have bias in doing this study? The study was started well before Oniro started, and I think we can probably say that she is a, a very well-known researcher. She does great research, and probably we can give her the benefit of the doubt that she was able to separate her potential future commercial bias from this study. Another thing to consider here is that the least significant change or the least significant detection change, it's also known as LSC, on DEXA is generally between 3 and 4%, meaning that anything within 3 or 4% of one another, we cannot say that that outcome is true or just due to the inability or inaccuracy or noise of DEXA. The differences between the benefit of the high rate intervention versus the osteogenic loading intervention are all within that LSC, meaning that we can't really say that high rate was better based off of this study because they were using DEXA and not more accurate outcome imaging metrics like quantitative CT. That's actually in the second part that we're gonna do in a different video. In some areas, specifically like in the spine, the control bone mineral density went up. In fact, in the spine, it went up by almost an entire point. Now, this is very odd in a population of you know average age 67 men. So if you're looking at men uh, you know, in this age group, they are going to loo be losing between one and 2% bone mineral density through the course of a year. If it went up by a percent, it makes me question what was happening from a control perspective, what was happening with the DEXA, was there something that was missed? So it calls into question that 4% of the spine for high rate, a little over 2% for osteogenic loading, and then 1% for control. So it just brings again into question, was there something that wasn't controlled for whenever you see an increase in bone mineral density in the control group. With the biodensity specifically, the fact that they used twice a week intervention may have had a negative impact on outcomes. Why would that be? Well, the manufacturers of biodensity and the, the franchise, OsteoStrong, they recommend that these devices are used once a week. They do that because the research supports the idea that it takes five to seven days to recover from that intervention. So if you're doing it again within a week, are you actually blunting the response? We don't really know the answer to that. It's not well enough studied, but it's definitely a question worth asking. The other question I have about this is that, you know, I've been on the biodensity and OsteoStrong machines. I've I used them. I don't have them here locally to use, but I use them when I can. And what I'll tell you is that there's a learning curve to using these machines. So you get on this machine and then you're supposed to push at your maximal effort. And I'm using quotes there for those that can't see me. 
Maximum effort is really hard to do, especially if you're not a trained athlete. So I am a, we'll call it an amateur athlete at best, but even with that, I really struggled to actually push 100%. And you can see that in my early adaptation to using the equipment. But here's my point. If you're not coached correctly, if you're not in the right position on these machines, then it's going to have a big impact in your capacity to actually push maximally. So my concern here is who was coaching these participants on this equipment? If this was done in a research environment that was really designed to, to do a great job of the lift more exercises, the high rate intervention, were they actually trained to do this machine appropriately or were they given some vague information and not encouraged to really push maximally? Hard to know without actually having been there. My concern is that, is that these machines need to be used correctly in order for them to actually do the thing that we think that they do, mostly because you're applying the pressure. And if you're not applying the pressure from the right position or you don't feel comfortable or for whatever reason you're not pushing really hard, it's not gonna have any impact. So what do we do? Well, we recommend high intensity resistance training. Belinda's research clearly shows that there's benefit in combining high intensity resistance training and impact, right? That's the high rate intervention. But impact is not necessarily easy for everybody to do. So that's where simulated impact becomes very helpful. So simulated impact would be osteogenic loading, potentially whole body vibration is another way to do it. The thing is, is that everybody's different. Some love osteogenic loading. I have patients that go to OsteoStrong franchise locations and they just love it. They love the community. They love the feel of the machines and it's just part of what they do. But we also recommend that they do resistance training on top of that because I think we need additional strategies to build muscle, to build strategies around balance, tactics for not falling or getting up, et cetera. Now, we also have patients that love to do deadlifts and back squats, and that's great for them, but that's not most people, nor can most patients who are coming to us even consider doing a deadlift or a back squat. So if you're not comfortable, please don't do it. Ultimately, these are all tools to consider, and we really need more research to define, you know, what is the frequency of osteogenic loading that matters? Who is the right population that's gonna see tremendous benefit from this technology? We need longer studies. Eight months is not really a long enough study. We need longer studies. We need bone mineral density outcomes on DEXA, but also using REMS, also using quantitative CT, or other technologies as they become available. So before you make any decisions, though, off of this study, please watch the second one, which is going to go through the second publication from the Lift More Men's Trial. And it's going to look, focus more on different imaging technology, but also more on the hips. That's it for right now. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.